Hey, what's going on guys? We're out here on this beautiful Wednesday morning. I'm out here to test the Wolf to see if the new electric water pump, the CWA 400, is going to keep the car cooler for a longer amount of time, which is going to allow me to hot lap for even longer. Um, I'm also out here testing to make sure that the air to oil cooler is going to keep the oil within reason and not let it get too hot. So that's pretty important uh, for a, a healthy, long living motor. Um, so I'm out here doing those two things. A uh, third thing is I'm gonna be testing the 245-4018 uh, Falcon is any 615K plus. Um, I guess to see what my range is gonna be in terms of tire pressures, I really don't need to go anything lower than about 20 PSI. Uh, the working range for these tires can be lower, but they've held up perfectly fine in the last competition and consistency is key here. So uh, as long as I can get down to about 22 PSI, I'll be happy. If you guys saw that but what happened was my oil temp uh, all of a sudden spiked to like 300 something degrees um, that's not a true representation of the current oil temperature uh, something else is going on so I'm gonna open up the ECU I got my laptop with me and I'm going to uh, input some values that are going to either filter the signal uh, to the oil temp or from the oil temp sensor uh, I guess what the ECU is interpreting in terms of what the temperature and sensor is actually reading. Uh, so if I filter it, I can slow it down a little bit and hopefully it's not going to continue doing this. I can't drift like that. Uh, I did one lap, but at the end of the lap, probably about 10 feet to the finish line here on balcony, the car went into a limp mode because it saw a temperature that it didn't like. Engine protection parameters come into play and they limit my revs to prevent further engine damage. Uh, because the ECU doesn't know that it's a fault. It just knows that the temperature is off and it does what it's told to do. Good thing though is that uh, I exited the track right now at 170 degrees for my water temp. So wow, massive, massive improvements. Uh, get this oil temperature issue under control and go hit it again. Should be good. Woo -wee. Water pump's working good. This thing's not even that hot. That's good. Since I'm checking things out already, uh, I want to go over the new AN fittings and the lines that I just made, make sure I've got no leaks. Again, this is this is why you come out here and test, so that you don't go to a competition and end up dealing with this while you're trying to figure out the line so that you can qualify high. So I'm really glad I came out here to get this done. Let's hit the track again, see if the oil temp issue is fixed. <laughs> was good uh, the car did not go into limp mode um, ran great I was able to do two hot laps and then uh, you know actually continue into the second lap I just wanted to see if the car was gonna get hot hot with the oil uh, didn't cut out so that's awesome now I know that the car is not gonna cut out in a situation where I might be uh, in a one more time or uh, on that second lap at the end of the lap and the car gets real hot you know the last thing you want is to be up against the wall in a chase or in a lead and the car cut out and you end up in the wall, right? So that's what that test was for. Uh, the bad news is that the oil temperature is getting pretty hot. Um, the water comes straight back down, which is a testament to this pump working so much better. I mean, like ridiculously better, like hands down, probably the best water pump, electric water pump that I've ever seen work in my experience. Um, the bad part is that 235, 240 is not gonna be okay for a sustained amount of time. Again, if it spikes to that and it comes back down immediately, you're okay. But this doesn't, you know. On the second lap, I'm leaving the line at, you know, 215 to 225, and then, you know, hitting 240 on the second lap, that's still not enough safety margin for me. So I think I'm gonna have to figure something out 
to get the oil temperature to be a little bit more consistent. And again, that's a testament to how well the CNR Racing oil to water oil cooler was working, right? Um, and then also, uh, you know, that's uh, also a testament to how the water, uh, the old water pump was doing dual purpose. You know, the water cooling the oil along with uh, the water was bringing that ceiling extra high and taking a longer period of time to come down from it. Now I have really cold water temperature, but my oil is getting too high. So um, is there a balancing act? Absolutely. Have I found it yet? Not yet. But I think um, this changes my uh, <laughs> my attitude towards the oil to water oil cooler. Uh, in a perfect world, I would run this pump with the oil to water oil cooler um, and get rid of the air to oil oil cooler. That way, uh, you know, I'd have that same balance, but this water pump, the CWA or Tecomoto Pureberg CWA 400 is up for the duty. It can handle both. Um, so what should we do? What do we do? What do we do? I've got a competition coming up in two days. Uh, one day to fix the car, the second day is practice. I might skip the practice day. The car's fast. Uh, I'd probably realign it 100% um, just to make sure everything's good. I'm getting this weird little uh, understeer situation. The car drives good. Uh, just need to realign it 100%. Woo! All right, back in the garage here. As you can see, I uh, did some uh, alignment settings just to see where I was at. Kind of all over the place compared to where I was. Uh, but it's okay. I know mechanically the car is stout, so all I have to do is line the car. Uh, in terms of the oil uh, temperature issues, that is something that I definitely need to address. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think it's gonna kill me, but you know, 225, 230 at the end of the run, 240 might be cutting it pretty close. But to tell you the truth, oil pressure holds uh, through the whole run, all the way up to 9850, which is the rev limit right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, there's not much more that I could do than just add like more capacity or more volume. So if I, uh, added like a second oil cooler, that would definitely help. Or if I possibly move to a different weight, but to tell you the truth, 50 weight's pretty pretty good. Um, I don't wanna venture too far from that because it's been shown to work. I know the oil isn't gonna break down. This is like the best oil you could pretty much buy. Um, super high zinc content, and I've never had any issues with Redline synthetic oil, so um, I might just end up driving the car, and if temperatures get too high, they get a little high, but it definitely comes down. It just takes a little bit to get down from that high ceiling, you know? Uh, water temps, oh, beautiful, beautiful. But again, uh, efficiency, now it doesn't have to do double load. Uh, ideally, I would like to go back to the water to oil, oil cooler, and that would probably land me somewhere in the middle, which would be awesome. Maybe the water temp got a little bit higher, but the oil temp wouldn't get as high. They would be closer together, so that would be cool. Uh, so I might look into getting the billet CNR Racing uh, water to oil oil cooler installed in there instead of uh, the air to oil oil cooler and uh, see if I could fit it somewhere. So um, yeah, now that I know it works, uh, it's definitely a little bit easier to make a decision um, as big as, you know, investing into another heat exchanger. Let's get this thing aligned and then hit the track on Saturday for practice for the Drift League shootout number two.